Welcome uh, to another in our series of Institute Encounters, uh, interviews with um, important scholars and leaders in various areas of life pertaining to Western civilization, its past and its future. I think this time it's going to be very much its future. <laughs> Both the past and the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, our guest today is Dr. Hans Mark. Uh, Dr. Mark has done so many things, uh, it's hard to uh, enumerate all of them. Um, he has been, among other things, the director of the Ames Research Center, uh, the, uh, assist the secretary of the Air Force, uh, the deputy director of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, uh, and I think we can say here at Texas Tech, you've been <laughs> Chancellor of the University of Texas, That's for which correct. we both honor and forgive you. <laughs> okay. And he's done other things to book that really hasn't satisfied at all. Uh, but um, he's a, a, a man who, in addition to being a scientist, a, a, a physicist, uh, and a leader of um, various agencies of great importance to the security of the country, he's also a visionary thinker uh, who cares about the future of uh, mankind and the future of our civilization. Uh, we'll be having something to say about that later during our lecture um, of an uplifting kind, uh, exploration and discovery. Uh, today, though, I, I, I'd like to talk about uh, some of the threats uh, to our future and to the future of Western and at all of, of civilization and the work that you've been very much involved in. Uh, having to do with uh, our, our military preparedness and deterrence and uh, various threats that uh, not only loom on the horizon but are out there. Um, we seem to be right now in a period where uh, the uh, genie is coming out of the bottle with respect to uh, nuclear proliferation uh, in which a variety of new states, uh, some of which um, are, are not reliable members to put it very modestly, uh, of the international community are arming up and perhaps provoking others to follow. Uh, what, what do you see right now as the um, most important concerns and um, how we should be responding to them? Uh, well, uh, you know, in 1968 we uh, created a, a non-proliferation treaty. Uh, we led that effort, and I was still in the nuclear weapons business at that time, so I had a minor role in it. And um, I think that on the whole, the treaty has been very successful. That is the the number of nations that signed the treaty. We we now have 189 sig uh, signatories, and uh, there are only four that are really uh, uh, let's see make problems, um, and uh, you know, we have uh, India never signed, and they do have an indigenous uh, capability of, uh, of uh, making the bombs. Uh, we have uh, Iran, which signed and then, uh, then uh, uh, abrogated the, the treaty, and that's of course the most interesting and probably dangerous one today. We have Israel. And we have North Korea. These are the four proliferators today. And I think that uh, that uh, uh, the Iranian one, I, uh, uh, we have to look. We have to put ourselves in into their thinking. And uh, what 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 I believe is that there are three possibilities of what uh, we could do. Uh, first of all, I believe they're going to get a bomb. I mean, there's just no question that they're going to be able to do that. And you think what they want to do that? They, they want to do that, and they want to do that because they want to be the hegemonic power in that uh, in that region. And uh, uh, nuclear weapon gets you into the club. Uh, now, one of the first thing they could do is, when they have it, is simply to write a letter to the Atomic Energy Agency and. In Vienna, and say, okay, we got one. Please come, take a look at it, and convince yourself that it'll work. And uh, then uh, our response, in my judgment, should be, okay, you got this this bomb, and now you need to join the club, and you need to 
work with us to let us in the U.S. inspect you the way we have uh, the treaty we have with the Russians, and you need to 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 become a a possessor of this terrible weapon and behave accordingly. And I think the nuclear that proliferation, proliferation treaty envision sanctions against countries that signed it and yet go ahead and develop it? No, there's nothing in the treaty about that, but there is a, 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 a provision that once you have a nuclear weapon, uh, in the long term you need to uh, figure out how to, how to make it less dangerous to the world. Uh, the, the, the treaty itself says that you need to abolish the weapons, and of course, uh, every president since uh, Harry Truman has made, or well, not Harry Truman, right? It's Eisenhower. Every president since Eisenhower made the speech that uh, we are, no, not even Eisenhower, it's 68. So 68 was Nixon, he's probably the first one who, who said it. Namely, the treaty says you need eventually to get rid of your nuclear weapons. And uh, while that would be something I'm not sure would be better because we managed to kill a lot of people without them and we managed to stabilize situations mm -hmm. with them. So, mm -hmm. but the main point here is that, uh, that uh, they will, that my judgment is that that is what they will do when they have a weapon. Now there are two other possibilities. One is they can test one. And if they do that, then my recommendation to our people would be that uh, uh, that we we detonate one that's much bigger than theirs, mm -hmm. and say, if you want to play that game, we're ready, but it's crazy, so don't do it. And of course, if they actually kill some people with it, if they bomb Tel Aviv or something like that, then we have to respond. You know, in that case, I think we simply have to bomb. With nuclear weapons. Yes, absolutely. I, I, like, there's no other, mm -hmm. no other, uh, other answer. Presumably, the Israelis would retaliate against that, wouldn't they? Uh, like submarines and things like I that. I suspect that uh, uh, we're talking to them, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, we, we, we should be doing that. Not the mm -hmm. so, uh, you already use them. We already. Done things that uh, other, that we hope other people won't do, and so on. We're the ones who have to have that responsibility. So that's uh, uh, you know one 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 layer of this. I think there's another layer that we need to consider, and that is there are potential proliferators around the world, and the number one potential proliferator, of course, is Japan. And I felt uh, that. Uh, there's probably a warehouse in Japan somewhere that had the makings of a, mm -hmm. of a plutonium bomb, say, and that they could put one together in, in six months. And they will do that the moment that they no longer believe that we would go to war if somebody hurt them. And could that, they be principally concerned with China and North Korea? Exactly. And so that's the uh, we need to take a position of saying there is uh, a, a, a uh, situation that could uh, happen where Japan would have to make a, have to assemble the weapon that I think they already have. Okay. Well, they must already be concerned with that. Of problem. course they've been concerned, of course, oh. of course. What would be the trigger that might push them into that? that Look, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 I think the president, in his uh, statement about pivoting to the East, delivered a message, hey guys, you know, we're interested in this, mm -hmm. this country and in this region. And so uh, let's not, let's be careful. And I think that uh, the trip you just made to Japan was, was part of that. To reassure uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so that's, that is a potential proliferator. I suspect the Germans are in the same position. Okay. 
uh, because they could do it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are... And they'd be worried about the Russian transport? Probably. Mm -hmm. Or the Iranians, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe the Iranians, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that, that if, uh, if it comes to a situation where Japan says, okay, we no longer believe that you guys would help us, the Germans would come to the same conclusion. Okay. Now, we do have the NATO treaty with, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Europe. And so we are, in fact, bound to defend uh, the treaty countries. And I, I believe that uh, we would hold to that if, say, if something happened. And we may see fairly yeah, soon. That includes the Baltic states, and those are potentially under the Russian gun. Well, look, the, the, the Baltic states are not as heavily Russian as some of the others. That is, the, the, uh, the, the Russian populations in, in uh, Estonia and Latvia are about 20%, and in Lithuania about 10%. Uh, uh, Ukraine, of course, is, is in the news, and uh, they are also in the 20-25% uh, region, most of them in the, in the eastern part of the country. Uh, but that's, that is uh, uh, a, a, I believe the Germans could, well, I, I, I think the Japanese have, probably have done because of the Koreans and the Chinese. The Germans don't have that problem, but I think their technology is such that... Do you think the Japanese decision could be a signal to the Germans and perhaps others that uh, it's time to take care of oneself? That's mm -hmm. that, that is, and that I hope never happens. I mean, I hope we behave ourselves in such a way that, uh, that we, we, we have credibility. Uh, Korea is is bizarre, uh, North Korea. Uh, they are not terribly competent, technically, uh, and uh, that, I think, uh, at one point or another, uh, the world is going to have to make a deal with China to stop support. That probably may be part of a larger deal, which would involve North and South Korea, that is a unification mm -hmm. state, and possibly a, a change in the position of Taiwan. So that if one puts this mix together and says we want to have a, a, a fewer flashpoints. Kind of a general East and Asian political settlement of some sort. That's of right. Mm -hmm. So that that's uh, now uh, you know we we also have have uh, problems technical problems um, with uh, with our stockpile. And, uh, what are those? Well, you know we have not uh, we have not uh, detonated a bomb since ninety three. So that's 21 years. Uh, we never designed any of our nuclear weapons to have a shelf life. And uh, what happens to them over time? Well, uh, I'm walking on the on the edge of classified <laughs> information if I talk about that. But uh, uh, you know, things things decay, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I was in the Pentagon in the second term of the Clinton administration, and we started a program which uh, uh, called for the disassembly and refurbishment of the various nuclear weapons that we had in the stockpile. And on my watch, we started the W76, and that program is finished now. It cost us several billion dollars, but uh, it was done. There are other weapons in the stockpile that are being fixed in that way. Uh, and <clears throat> the thing that I would, uh, that I recommended, in fact, while I was still in office, I was the DDR, the Director of Defense Research and Engineering, and 
uh, for various reasons I had the nuclear portfolio. And uh, I think that the, the uh, uh, we should probably uh, build a new nuclear weapon. And that's what I recommend it. And it should be, it should have the following uh, uh, characteristics. I mean, first of all, it has to fit into whatever we have as delivery vehicles. The second is it has to be designed in such a way that it is, it is safer against a, an accidental explosion. You know, the high explosive that sets these things off is an unstable substance. Mm -hmm. And it can do one of two things. It can get more sensitive or less sensitive. Both is, both is bad. Is, is that a problem with our existing stockpile? Uh, not that I know of. Okay, I don't think so. The existing stockpile is more, more, more in the gaskets and the, in the ordinary stuff that gets bad. So we're going to real pipe parts. Right. Uh, but what I would like to do is to build a new weapon again that I've said is compatible with our, our uh, delivery systems, safer, uh, which uh, has a shelf life, 25, 30 years, I designed it so that it does that. Uh, and finally, one that does not have to be tested. And so our computer models have to be good. Mm -hmm. we, have, you know, we have a big database, and I believe that can be done. No, we can underground. We can do underground tests, mm -hmm. right? No, we can. Now, we, we have, uh, there is a, a comprehensive test ban today. And we have said uh, voluntarily that uh, this. Uh, uh, the, this comprehensive test ban treaty will, uh, we, uh, President Clinton signed it, okay, but the Senate never rat ratified it. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this kind of. We did ratify back in the 60s the uh, atmospheric test ban, so they're that's prohibited correct. from doing that. That's correct. Do the Russians have this problem as well? The problem of deterioration sure. of their weapons? We inspect their weapons. Look, we have, we have a mutual mm -hmm. inspection. I used to run that uh, that uh, system. In fact, we started, it's been going for a long time, but we reorganized it into something called the, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency on my watch. John Hamry and Brian and a few other people worked on that. And they, they, uh, uh, the idea is mutual inspection, which is still going on. And the, the, uh, uh, my, my feeling is, well, the, the Bush administration, when it came in, Bush, Bush one, uh, actually started a program to build a new nuclear weapon. We call it the Re Reliable Replacement Warfare. Mm -hmm. okay. And then make them all, get, get rid of all the others, build enough of those that whatever kind of a deal we can make with the Russians, and uh, that would be the, a much cheaper and simpler way to handle the technology of nuclear weapons. Um, unfortunately, the current administration canceled that program, which I think is a mistake. Uh, we should have done it. We would have saved money and we would have had a safer stockpile. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in, in addition, uh, I think we're the only nation who can build such a such a weapon that I've defined. And so we should be the ones leading the comprehensive test entry because we would shut the Koreans down mm -hmm. if uh, uh, we had such a treaty. And uh, this is, I think, uh, uh, an important matter that the next administration should consider. What about the possibility of nuclear weapons falling into the hands of non-state actors, terrorists, folks like that? Is that a, a, a big threat in your opinion? Uh, well, it's not easy to set them off. 
<laughs> and they're, they're, they're big. They're cumbersome. They are all in very highly protected places. Uh, I, I don't see that happening. Now, obviously, we have to keep the pressure on the terrorist organizations. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in that instance, I really applaud the current administration. They are killing the leaders of the dangerous mm -hmm. people, and that is what we continue. We need to do. That really hurts the ability uh, of the terrorists to uh, to prevail. But there's no likelihood that, say, the, the North Koreans could uh, create some sort of suitcase bomb or put something on a ship. No. Um, the, this, these things are very radioactive. You got to mm -hmm. put a lot of lead around them. Right, right, right. right. That's, there is a, 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 a mocked up suitcase bomb in the museum at Sandia, and that was a mistake to put that out because if you, you couldn't get near it, <laughs> you know, you die. So it'd be a one way mission. It's a one way around. mission, right? Now, I know the terrorists do one way missions, but uh, you still have to put it together, and that's a tough job. Are, are we at all threatened by uh, the weaponization of space? Do you see that as a major concern for the future? No. Uh, look, uh, space is already, it's, it's not weaponized. But it is militarized and it should be militarized because we have a, 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 a great stake in the intelligence we get from a space-based system. Target GPS, and uh, we are the technological leaders in that business, and we intend to remain that. Way. So uh, I, I think that it would be, uh, you know, if you if you if you the, the weapons themselves, uh, if, you, if you put a weapon in, in Earth orbit, it's probably harder to hit a target than than to launch it. The ground. So, uh, what you have is is the infrastructure for your uh, for the for the conduct of war, and that, the GPS, of course, is very important there. <coughs> and uh, uh, the uh, means for finding out what people are doing. So in terms of weapons, it's not really meaningfully it's high not ground. A can, uh, are there threats to our ability to kind of uh, command intelligence gathering from space? Are there weapons that could... Well, the Chinese have shot, down, have shot down one of their satellites after we shot down one of ours and to demonstrate that we could do that. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't think that's very likely as a, as a way to do it. I think the, the likeliest, and we know they're jamming, when people are jamming things, and we have to deal with that, and we have to figure out how to unjam. Now, I believe one of your uh, principal responsibilities uh, when you were in the Clinton administration was, um, and maybe earlier on, was the whole problem of missile defense. Yes. And um, how do we stand on that? Are we uh, investing enough in it? Or, uh, well, uh, you know, we now have. Uh, the, the, the best defense system we have is the, uh, the sea-based one, okay. and that has two advantages. One is that you can move it, and you can you can defend places. Uh, you know, we have these, we have about thirty uh, Aegis cruisers, and another twenty-five or thirty destroyers that also have these weapons on them, but a smaller number. And we're building another 50 of those destroyers. So we will have a very robust sea-based ability to shoot down uh, nuclear weapons or, or missiles that can carry mm -hmm. nuclear weapons. And um, uh, we deploy these to, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the deployments are today, but I, I'd be very surprised if we didn't have several in the Persian Gulf several in the Mediterranean. We just put a frigate in the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. and I'm, just, I'm, I'm hoping 
mm -hmm. that the president will simply say, let's put five cruisers in there, and okay, guys, what would you like to do? Uh, that These are things that, that are, are open to us, and uh, obviously Turkey has been very interested in, in our presence. I mean, they really like it that we, we do that. And uh, I think that's a, that is a, a these are all moves that... Uh, that and, and they're designed to kind of intersect missiles during their upward course? Uh, they can design, they know, they can, they can strike them uh, on, well, depending on the, they can, they can shoot down an intermediate range of ballistic missile, mm -hmm. SCUD. And that one has a range of something like 3,000 miles. The higher ones, the intercontinental missiles, they can't reach yet. We're working on that. Mm -hmm. And we are working on it. That's a program underway. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I was involved in the, in the first program with the... With the uh, and, our, our, and our ability, they used to, people who were critical of this, used to kind of mock uh, what they thought was an impossible task, shooting down relatively small objects, uh, but but we have the ability to kind of target them now and with some reliability. Well, look, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I mean, I I had many many debates with my friends about this, mm -hmm. and I was obviously on the side of, of building things. Um, what you can't do is to. And, and this was the argument back in the 60s and the 70s, that where each side had 10,000 nuclear weapons in mm -hmm. various places on submarines and on airplanes and, 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 and silos. Uh, you can't defend yourself against that kind of an attack. What you can do is stop the Iranians mm -hmm. from, 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 from hitting somewhere because the Aegis cruisers have a very good record of hitting. And, well, you've heard about the Iron Dome. Mm -hmm. That technology is, exists and it works. Do other okay. countries have that kind of ability as well? Do the Israelis have it? I doubt it. Well, the Israelis have it, but it's our, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's their electronics and our rockets, essentially. They could, they could take down an Iranian missile? They could probably take down the. Well, wait a minute. They can take down the the uh, missiles that they get shot at now, which are uh, short range, which are short range. I, whether they could take down the Scud or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we can take them down. Do the Russians have that capacity? I doubt it. So this is really asymmetrical. It's by asymmetrical, now. absolutely. So if the, if the Russians were contemplating using a nuclear weapon, uh, they would have to contemplate using them massively. They would have to contemplate using them massively. Uh, rather than some sort of demonstration. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we can feel the fact when, when the Koreans started uh -huh. sh shooting their rockets, Bill Perry, who was my good friend and boss, Secretary of Defense and Clinton won. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> He said that uh, when the Korean announced, Koreans announced, they used to announce their launches. And so he said, well, they'll announce the launch and we'll announce a test. <laughs> they'll launch their rocket and we'll shoot it down. <laughs> so that but to was, your knowledge, that, that has not yet happened. It has not happened, but it could easily. And the Japanese, by the way, we, we are, we're working with the Japanese on these ages cruisers. Uh -huh. So what, what do they do? Electronics as no, well? No, the ships. The they, ships. They build the ships. I see. They build the ships. Oh, yeah. And they have, I don't know, three or four of them. Right now. And they have their own. And they have their own, and they sit in the Sea of Japan, and they use our technology with, uh -huh. the, with the rockets. And the Chinese, do they have this capacity? Uh, no, not yet. Mm -hmm. So this is actually one area in which we can rest a little easier, because I guess the right. work that you've done among other people, we have sort of, you know, yeah. we, we thank you. For, for that, are there, are there any other uh, emerging threats that we should be particularly concerned about? Well, look, the threats are, uh, uh, you know, the, the Chinese have told us that uh, they regard the East China Sea and the South China Sea as their territorial waters. 
we have a, we in the United States have a vital interest in freedom of the seas. Uh, okay, so the Chinese put this zone in what, last December. Mm -hmm. the, 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 that we have to uh, notify them if you want to fly through that zone. Well, we took two of our B-52s from Guam, flew into the zone, didn't tell anybody, the Chinese knew about it. Uh, nothing happened. And uh, I'm, I'm not privy to the information, but I'm sure that they were routinely flying through that zone, waiting for the Chinese to do something. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of threats that, uh, that uh, you, you, you deal with. Uh, the, uh, the Japanese islands, those little islands, I forget the name now, uh, Senku, Senku. Mm -hmm. I forget it, but anyway, they're unoccupied, but they, the Chinese and the Japanese both have, they use their Coast Guard ship for, for, for the ships for that, and they bump into each other, you know, so they help, it's an elbowing game. Mm -hmm. And the, you you just have to, you know, stand up to that and, and uh, tell them, hey, you guys, we're, we're serious. And, and that is the most important job of a president, to, to create an, an situation where people know exactly what we would do if something happens mm -hmm. Well, I hope somebody's listening. Because <laughs> I agree with you. And uh, and thank you very much for kind of sharing all this uh, all this inside of knowledge with us. I appreciate that and we look forward to your lecture this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.